Hello everyone and welcome to week four of the Physiotherapy Exercise and Physical Activity course. Um, today I'm here with Dr Brian Johnson. Hello Brian. Hello Rachel, how are you? Good, thank you. So Brian has been one of the facilitators or is one of the facilitators on this course. So we're going to um, talk to Brian a little bit about week four in a minute. Um, we've, we've just finished week three. So week three we covered chronic illness and we looked at um, the four main non-communicable diseases and, and also looked a little bit into uh, mental health um, and how physical activity can help those sorts of conditions. So a really good week in week three and we're going to continue the clinical theme in week four. Um, so Brian, you have been the facilitator that's been working on week four. I was wondering first of all if you could just um, introduce yourselves to yourself to the participants and just tell us a little bit, little bit about yourself and the work that you do. Okay, well, yeah, thanks Rachel and um, thank you very much for sort of inviting me on as a facilitator on this because I think it's it's a great course and I'm very happy to help. So I'm a GP working in North Wales and I've been a GP for 26 years and then a, a sport and exercise medicine doctor which I've been for about 15 years and I sort of I discovered I was first interested in sort of exercise if you like it's medicine when I was sort of as a school kid when I used to go out and run after doing my exams and try and clear my mind and sort of used to set me up clear my mind and make me feel better about starting the next exam um so then when I sort of joined the British Association of Sport and Exercise Medicine sort of 15 20 years ago I got into sport and then got into very much exercise medicine um and I started bringing ideas to sort of other people to see what they thought about them. So I, what I couldn't find was what I felt was good, decent advice on the benefits of exercise and the treatment of exercise in one place. You could find it all over the place, thousands and thousands of research articles, lots and lots of websites, but trying to put it together was difficult. So I went to the Faculty of Sport and Exercise Medicine and then to the uh, CMO of Wales, Dr Tony Jewell at the time in 2011, and talked about putting it in one place. And from that, through uh, uh, what's called the Welsh Deanery, uh, the website Motivate to Move was born, where basically I've put on all the benefits of exercise across all the disease processes, not just the sort of main ones, but we're sort of exploring all the ones which are emerging. And they're all on the website with other resources to then go and seek and hopefully improve your own knowledge, depending on much you want to do, same as this course. And that process carried on because I started collaborating with Anne Gates, the other from Exercise Works, who's your other co um, provider of this course and we worked on the undergraduate resources together and the, the um, exercise uh, medicine handbook on the week one I think it is the one-stop guide is is that is provided to students but is just as good for qualified health professionals and that's the resource you can access and from there if you've got it online you can link into the website that work Motivate to Move has been endorsed by the Royal College GP in Wales, Welsh Deanery, uh, Public Health Wales and the British Association of Sport and Exercise Medicine. And that has now gone also um, up to the Royal College GP to UK as a potential resource for their new initiative uh, on a clinical priority on physical activity and lifestyle, which is just starting this year and kind of run for three years. And I'm on the steering group of that committee which we're just getting going and will be providing resources across to all GPs in the UK on exercise medicine. So that's um, yeah a little bit about myself and I'm delighted to help with this thing because when I look at the website and look at the discussion group I see very enthusiastic physios really sort of keen on what's going on and asking questions and I think it's fantastic and I think you're probably much better than a group of GPs doing the same thing. And I'm delighted that physiotherapists, many of I've got very good friends who have patched me up over the years and, um, you know, delighted to help. 
Great. Well, and thank you for your help. And I'm sure I'm sure there are a few doctors and a few GPs on the course as well. And I'm sure they're and I'm sure they're engaging just as much as the physios. Um, it's just that we have a huge physio audience in here. But um, thank you for sharing your um, work with us. Um, Motivate to Move is a great resource. And I know we're using it a little bit more in week five, I think, um, linked into a few more of your resources. So so we look forward to using those. But um, can you so you've worked on week four, would you like to just uh, tell us a little bit about what we'll all be looking at in week four um, as we go through the course next week, this week. Yes, yep. Week four is interesting because there's sort of, we've touched on in week three, sort of really the strong places of evidence. And week four, some of it's more emerging evidence. So the, the first subject is surgery. And there really hasn't been much on surgery and exercise done until sort of I worked with Anne Gates. And so, um, what we've done there is it's very much emerging evidence of the benefits of getting people fit pre-surgery and post-surgery. And of course, I mean, physiotherapists in hospitals see this all the time. You're often asked to help people post-surgery, but, you know, to a lot of other people and to the patients, they don't always realise that actually being fit for a surgical procedure will help them. And so it might be simple appendicitis well that's hopefully a young person and you know, they're going to recover all right but if you look at the heart disease and the peripheral vascular disease and the cancer cases they're often in the more elderly people with more morbidity and if they can be fitter prior to their surgical procedure um, there's a lot of evidence emerging that they will have a better outcome and better outcomes is what it's all about and, and I've seen that with my own patients, so peripheral vascular disease, gentleman down to 150 yards, managed to encourage him to get walking. We got him up to what the guidelines would say. He might get up to three to 400 yards. He got up to three to 400 yards, still had his operation, okay, but he was in a much fitter situation. The anaesthetist was very glad of the advice that he'd been given. So that's, you know, an interesting area. A new area as well, pregnancy. Now, pregnancy, uh, I, there's going to be resources there, and a lot of physios will see all about the pelvic pain that they have to treat. But there's emerging evidence again that uh, pregnant ladies, if they keep themselves fit or they get fitter, have better outcomes. And this is exciting obstetricians around the world and all college of GPs, sorry, all college of obstetricians and gynaecologists. <laughs> has put out advice of that in the UK and I believe, and the Americans have, and I suspect other colleges around the world have done the same. So that's going to be an interesting area to, to see. Um, and yeah, in practice this morning, I saw a new lady, newly pregnant, and we gave her some brief advice and signposted her to resources she could use. And she was actually very pleased with, to receive that advice. Then we go on to, well, the, the bony ones. So we've got osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. And again, sort of sometimes obvious, obvious advice, osteoporosis, we know density of bones, weight bearing exercise is so important. But again, <laughs> the public aren't so aware of this. So if we as health professionals can sort of encourage our patients to be moving more, become more active, will hopefully gradually, and I mean gradually, <laughs> reduce the incidence of osteoporosis. And we, we don't know who the next osteoporotic person's going to be. So that, well, more commonly in ladies, but you know, that lady, let's say in the, in the 20s, was a teenager who's not doing much, she's putting herself at risk. And the, the earlier we can encourage people to to move more and hopefully they'll avoid that. Uh, osteoarthritis, yeah, rheumatoid arthritis, yeah, group of GPs, I went to a lecture, the consultant very, um, but, well, sorry, well he, he, sorry, he encouraged exercise as treatment in the lecture and um, it was very interesting because loads of the GPs actually put up their hands saying, is it safe? Is it safe on the joint? because it's, you know, it's a, it's a damaged joint, but the evidence is it is safe. And these, these patients are at risk of cardiac disease and cachexia, and we're going to help prevent those. So there's a lot of work being done there as well. 
The second to last group of group on this uh, week four is falls, and I think all physios will have dealt with <laughs> falls patients. And I think I'm not going to go too much into that. You'll know far more about prevention of falls than I do. But obviously, the, the evidence behind that will be there. And to look at your own schemes and what you can do, um, I think it will be very useful. And the last section is about disability. And um, this is um, an area where <laughs> I think it's been sadly neglected, except for things like the Olympics, where now they have you know, disabilities in the Olympics. And I think certainly within Britain, there's been a lot on that, done on that from a sporting point of view. But I still don't think there is down at the ground roots level. And on your earlier, um, I think it was in week two, there was a question about that, that if you, you know, if somebody with a disability was asked, would they exercise more? And the evidence is that they would. The thing is, they have to be asked <laughs> and that has to be introduced to them. And that I whole concept has to be brought into that. So I think we're going to find plenty of interesting work there to read. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a really interesting week and I'm really looking forward to the topics that we're covering this week, you know. Um, so um, thank you for just uh, introducing us to those topics um, and we'll enjoy reading more about those this week. But before we, so before we delve into the week, um, as it's your area of specific expertise or the area that you work in, um, um, would you, have you got any uh, sort of physical activity messages for the participants on this course that you'd like to share, that you'd like them to take away? Yes, I kind of uh, knew this was coming up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's two messages I want to talk about, really, and, and they are brief. I think the, the very first message is just to talk about physical activity. What's going on in the UK and around the world is to try and introduce people to physical activity. We're trying to embed it into normal, normal life. And certainly as health professionals, we need to embed it into our consultations. In the UK, smoking, well embedded. Alcohol advice, well, well embedded. Um, obesity advice and diet, hmm, sort of a bit dubious and very conflicting, but that's not our, our realm here, apart from the role of exercise and obesity. <laughs> which is another topic. But if you look at many of the surveys which have been done, the Lord Darcy in his next stage report, he found 54% of patients said their GP gave, never gave any advice on diet or exercise. The Macmillan Society found 72% of GPs didn't speak to them about the benefits of exercise. So if we're not talking to half or even three quarters of our patients about activity, there's no wonder that they're not going to understand the benefits. So I think the very basic message is introduce it and talk about it with your patient. And if we can get that across 100% or 90%, sometimes of course it, it, isn't, it isn't appropriate for every single person, but it is appropriate in very, very, very high percentage of our patients. And the first thing is if we can just get it into that conversation, then we're going to get more people interested. And to back that up, when I now talk to my patients uh, about activity, and I often talk to the ones who say they're doing plenty, and I say, okay, so you, you're doing plenty, so how, how do you know about that? I'm actually surprised, but quite a lot say, because a health professional told me to, and I discovered that that was why it was good for me. <laughs> And that's one of the commonest actually re responses I get when I ask people you know, about, about if they're already doing it. So talking about it. And then the second message is really to, I would just encourage people to look at behavioral techniques of in health promotion. It's not easy um, encouraging people to, to be more active and everybody's at a different stage in, of readiness and Behavioural techniques are useful and you'll find them, you'll find them on my own work and motivate to move and you'll find plenty of information out there and you can get in touch with us, you know, via, well, you'll see I'm on LinkedIn and you can get in touch via that way and I can show you plenty of, tell you plenty of resources that you can go to. Uh, and in many countries, I'm sure there's, there's courses on behavioural change and 
This has been proven to work in a lot of behavioural areas. It started in drug therapy and alcohol treatment, but has moved into physical activity and we're getting the results with it. And, and I would encourage people to think of that as part of their, their strategy to help, uh, help uh, their patient. Yeah, a couple of really good messages there. I think, um, yeah, just get it. Just talking to our, the people that we're working with, our clients and our patients about physical activity is definitely the first step. Um, and then, yeah, paying attention to those um, methods to change behaviour. And I think we will cover quite a lot more of that in week five about the behaviour change aspects of um, physical activity and things. So two really nice messages so thank you Brian um, it's going to be a good week and we look forward to the discussions and you all you participants um, we'll see you in the discussion forum both Brian and I and the other facilitators will be in there so please do post your questions and we'll see you next week in the discussion forums so thank you Brian okay thank you Rachel and thank you for you guys out there on the course keep keep reading keep understanding and keep it going